Welcome to uh, a discussion about my two Levos. Um, yeah, I have two Levos. I have a big bad Levo, which is the full blown 90 Newton meter torque monster. And then I have my bourbon Levo, which is the Levo SL. Has half the power of this guy, much lighter weight. This one here, my big bad Levo, this is this one's been around a little longer, right? It's um it's got a lot of power, man. It's four times U power. So when I get on this bike, um, it's fast. It's really fast. Uh, meaning when you start to pedal, if you really have the, the power ramped up a bit, um, it'll get to speed very quickly. It'll, it'll zoom right up to like 10 miles an hour or 15 miles an hour, uh, without a whole lot of hesitation. Um, if I don't have the power ramped up super firm, then, you know, it takes a little longer to ramp up to power, um, but still pretty quick. Um, and there's no hill that it won't climb. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous how, how much climbing uh, I do on this bike. It's not uncommon for me to go out and do 5,000 vertical feet and a single ride from the house, 48 miles up, down, up, down, over, connect, three, four, five different preserves, right? 38, venerable Fox 38 up there. Wow, pretty much a monster truck up in the front with the grip two damper and the uh, 170 mils of travel is definitely more than the spec, um, but I have a 27 inch wheel. Uh, so I kind of made up for the smaller wheel than the 29 that it came with, with a longer fork. And then in the back, uh, I've got a DVO, JDX coil. It's a little long stroked. It's got a uh, little extra travel, seven millimeters of travel back there. So 157 in the back, 170 in the front. Um, these are the uh, meaty 2.5 spike tires, but I'm also known to run uh, 2.6s from WTB. Um, pretty phenomenal traction from these guys. It feels like a monster truck. I feel like I can do no wrong. Sometimes I get myself into trouble simply because I don't think I can get into trouble. But then I get myself out of trouble. Or should I say the big bad Levo gets me out of trouble. Um, the Levo SL over there, my bourbon Levo, which I've named after my, my Chris King bourbon bits. Um, two times U power, right? Half the amount of torque, half the battery. That thing is like just under 40 pounds. This thing's pushing 50 pounds. It's like a 10 pound delta between the two. Um, out of the box, you can get those things under 36 pounds. I just tend to make my bikes heavier with heavier tires and cush core and a coil spring because I have the same DVO rear shock on that bike, long stroked as well. Um, but I have a 36 instead of a 38. I kept the, the 29 inch wheels on there so that it rolls a little more efficiently because it doesn't have the same power, right? It, uh, it requires more of me. And, uh, and so having a little more efficiency with the 29 inch wheel is really helpful. Um, everything else is set up pretty similar, like saddle, seat post, grips, shifters, brakes. Gotta love my DH Evo brakes from TRP, big thick rotors. I do have a bigger rotor on the Big Bad Levo though. That thing is a 223 front rotor with a 203 rear uh, versus the 203 front rotor and 180 on the Levo SL. But I mean like my rad measurements are identical. My stem lengths are identical. I really keep these bikes set up proper for, for my body, um, but they are different in the way they handle. Um, so I should get into that because well, I have both, right? Um, there's some days where I just want to go out and ride by myself and uh, feel like I'm really 
getting a solid workout and uh but i want to go further um i usually ride my sl i just leave from the house i go into santa Teresa, do a couple laps cross the street into calero do another lap push out to the back of rancho canada del oro up to bald peaks and then turn it around and come back home and uh, it feels like a regular enduro really i guess it's got a much more familiar mountain bike feel to it um, if i'm riding with my friends uh, that don't have a levo it's a little closer to what they're riding um, even if i turn it off it doesn't have all the heavy drag that the bigger motors have so it just kind of feels like a regular bike when i'm riding analog uh, with another friend or family member that doesn't have an a levo um, but if I start to get a little tired, I can always add a little juice, right? Um, it's a little noisier. I wish it was quieter like the big bad Levo, but uh, it's not that noisy. Um, I just hear it more. Uh, it's got a geared uh, motor as opposed to a belt driven motor. So uh, there's a little bit more wine out of that guy. If I'm riding with my friends that have the big Levo or a Canevo, oh, forget about it. I have to be on the big bad Levo or I'll get dropped. I mean, this bike can go so fast up a Jeep road. There's no, there's no hanging with it if you don't have one. It'll just drop you like a bad habit. So, um, so I love riding this bike with my friends that have similar bikes. And uh, we'll go and do these monster rides, you know, 40 miles, 50 miles, three, four, 5,000 vertical feet. Um, I just love how monster truck it feels it's super grounded it's got uh, a lot of ballast man it's like i feel super planted on the dirt um heavier more stable really capable right um yeah the levo sl is stable i mean is there an unstable bike these days it's slacker head angles longer wheelbases 29 inch wheels on that bike it's pretty stable but it's not as stable as this thing. Like I can send this thing into some crazy, rooted, rocky, rutted, ugly exit. And I'm like nose wheeling into it on purpose because I can, why not? It's super fun. Um, yeah, I like to go out and ride both of these bikes. Um, it's really frustrating. I, a lot of people ask me which one I like the most. Well, which one do you like the most, Lars? And I'm like, ah, I hate that question. I mean, even before I had Levos, I had more than one bike, right? And which one do you like the most? Well, they're better at different things and, uh, and there's trade-offs on both. So, you know, it's tough to say, but um, in today's world, most people that have an e-bike have a big burly motor Levo. So I think that this bike is the most likely to match up with other people's bikes while the levo sl is a better match for everybody that doesn't have a levo yet or people that have levo sls obviously we're going to see a lot more people getting this bike especially as more people have a chance to test ride it's hard with covid times to test ride bikes i get it um, and people just don't understand that bike they're like well if i'm going to get an e-bike why the heck wouldn't i just go full monty and have the big bad levo they don't know but like you have to experience the levo sl firsthand to really understand all of its attributes and feel wow this bike is super cool um so i i'm hard pressed to say which one i would want over the other they're both awesome so yeah i'm gonna ride one of those bikes uh now <laughs>